more starts now. Good evening. Thanks for staying with us here at 730. The Iowa caucus is about a month away now. The pool of Republican contenders challenging Joe Biden's second term in the White House continues to shrink with clear front runners who we're all familiar with. Former President Donald Trump leads the race for the Republican nomination, but there are demographics where his lead could begin to see some cracks. If there is to be an Iowa surprise, Republican women will likely power it. I think they're underestimating the people who don't want the chaos anymore. I am likely a Nikki Haley caucuser. Sort of a rough rule of thumb in politics. If a candidate garners a strong female turnout, the chances are strong they will win. According to the Center for American Women and Politics, women have registered and voted at higher rates than men in every presidential election since 1980, with that turnout gap between women and men growing slightly larger with each successive presidential election. That rounds out to typically 10 million more than the number of men registered to vote. These trends have continued in presidential years, something that can't be ignored as we are now less than a year into the away from the 2024 election. The number of female voters has exceeded the number of male voters in every presidential election since 1964. And as we get closer to Iowa, a question then has emerged. Will Republican women vote for the woman on the ballot? Enter a growing challenger to former President Donald Trump, fellow presidential candidate and former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley. Haley is breaking with the far right in the case of a Texas woman who was denied an abortion that her doctors said was necessary to protect her health. But Haley stopped short of directly criticizing the decision made by the Texas Supreme Court during a campaign stop in New Hampshire. So will Haley's position on abortion and a host of other issues resonate with women voters? CNN's Jeff Zeleny joins us tonight with more. That's why I think you need a bad woman in charge at the White House. Nikki Haley is trying to break the highest glass ceiling in politics, but you won't hear her say so, at least not directly. And that's just fine with many of her admirers. I think we're past the point of talking about that. She's, she's a candidate, male or female, she's a strong candidate. Thalia Flores has a front row seat to the New Hampshire primary and to Haley's rise, whether or not it's history making. I mean, it'd be great to have a female president, but that's not what it's about. As she courts all voters, Haley takes great care to walk a fine line, wielding gender as a humorous shield. I love all the attention, fellas. Thank you for that. And a defensive sword. They're five-inch heels, and I don't wear them unless you can run in them. Helene Hagar is blunt about her feelings that it's high time for a woman in the White House. It's time to get the testosterone out of the White House and put a woman in there, um, but a specific woman. Not Kamala Harris, uh, but Nikki Haley. At campaign rallies, it's a sentiment echoing from Iowa. She's smart, she's tough, um, and she's passionate. To South Carolina. She is level-headed and speaks to the issues rather than a lot of rhetoric. Haley is on a quest to draw suburban women back to the Republican Party after so many fled during the era of Donald Trump. Her support among that key demographic is a leading reason she fares better in a hypothetical contest against President Biden, polls show, even as a strong majority of Republican women still back Trump. We know her as Crooked Hillary, but to Nikki Haley, she's her role model. Allies of Ron DeSantis are trying to compare Haley to Hillary Clinton in new TV ads that have been debunked as misleading. Haley is on the air with ads of her own, featuring her husband, a National Guardsman in uniform. American strength doesn't start wars, it prevents them. That's what I'll do as president. As the final chapter of the primary comes into view, Haley now rarely repeats a rallying cry from her announcement earlier this year. May the best woman win. She makes clear she's neither campaigning on gender politics nor identity, a balance voters like Erin Jorgensen take note of. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean I'm gonna vote for you. You have to be, you have to be the right person. And I'm just happy that maybe the right person is finally a woman.
whether talking about abortion. I don't think the fellas have known how to talk about it properly. Or the economy. It hasn't been an easy time for young families at all. Haley often infuses her answers with her life experience as a woman and a mother, which draws admiration from her crowds. She's my voice. She speaks for me. But Vicki Schwegler makes clear that's not why she intends to give Haley her vote. I would say it's time for the right resume. We're not looking at somebody, and we're not going to box anybody in because you're a woman, because you're a first-generation American. That's not who Republicans are. Jeff Zeleny reporting tonight. Haley is only the fifth major female candidate to seek the Republican presidential nomination.